This is a TX6 field mixer by Teenage Engineering. A mixer, audio interface, MIDI controller, sequencer, DJ mixer and synthesizer packed in an incredibly small package. It contains four drum engines consisting of kick, clap, snare and hi-hat and four waveforms sine, triangle, square, and so on. And in this second video about the TX6 field mixer, we'll go through all the different synth capabilities, effects, and sequencers in this incredibly small device and see how we can program them to make music. So in the last video, we took a look at many of the basic features of the TX6. We looked at the various knobs and faders and what they do and the effects and so on. So in this video, we're mainly gonna cover the synth portion. So some information may overlap with the previous video, but if there's anything you're wondering about, about the main features of this little device, you can check out the last video I made. And I'll leave a little thing right here. So let's look at the synth engines of this device. The synth part was what I was the most excited about with this device, because I love synths, and I'm sure many of you do too. But it's also the feature that confused me the most, at least in the beginning. Even though this device has MIDI out capabilities, it doesn't really allow you to use these keys or anything else to play chromatically within. So in order to play chromatically, you have to dial in various dials that we're gonna look at later. First, let's see what synth engines we have. To access the synth menu, we press shift and the selector button. Here I'm already on synth, but you scroll down till you find the word synth and you select it. Now you see a wavetable and an X. This simply means that the synth engine is off. Turn to the right and you will find the play option. This means that we can trigger a synth using the track button. So here we have a square wave on track three that's being played. Next, we have a sequencer. That lets you assign different sequencers to each synth track. And lastly, we have tone, which just turns on the oscillator in one even note. So this is good for dialing in sounds or for creating drones or other things. So let's look at the different oscillators in the synth engine. So if we go to track one, you'll hear it doesn't play anything when it's on tone and that's because it currently is on a drum oscillator. So it has a kick drum sound going right now. So let's put it on play and now we can trigger it with a play button. So in order to access the parameters for each oscillator, you press shift and the track button. So right now we access the track effects that we were also covering in the last video. So we have the filter, the EQ, the compressor, the gain, and the panning. Then you also have a few extra pages for the synth mode. So here we have the oscillator. It's currently on kick. Can change it to snare, clap, hi hat. So these are the percussive oscillators, and then you have the sine wave, the triangle wave, square wave, saw, and back to the percussion. So once you've selected the oscillator you want, you can manipulate it further. So press shift and the track button again. And here you see a graphic showing a keyboard. This is how you select the tone of the oscillator. So here we're currently at a B. And then we can dial in to whatever tone we want. And it goes very deep. I can't even hear this. To excruciatingly high pitched. So 
So if we leave it at a C, on a C4. So here we can control the length of the note when played by the sequencer. And then we can select sequencers in the next screen. So in order to turn on the sequencer, we have to go back to the synth menu and toggle from play to sequencer. So now there's a little graphic showing you the current sequence. If we go back to zero, there are no notes being triggered. So you have all these patterns, 22 in total. And the last sequencer is random. So it will cycle through all the 22 sequencers. And if we go back to the length, we can now dial in to get the length we want and the sound we want. Now we can start adding in more oscillators and create a fuller, richer tone in the TX6. So we can add some drums. If we put a, in a kick, for example. And for the kick, we want a simpler sequence. Do just on the one and three. On the next oscillator, we put in a snare drum then we'll have the sequencer on th two and four or maybe we'll even have something like that you can put in some hats on the next one And then we can start adding in more melodic notes. So we're going to C. So we can use a triangle on track two. Put it a minor third up. Then we'll use a more interesting sequencer. down so it's a little bit more plucky and we can add a little bit of a low pass filter okay the next let's put in a square wave And now we have a little C minor chord just droning on. In order to get some more variation, we can use the random sequencer on the pitched oscillators. That creates a lot of interesting results and you never really know what you get, but you still have the stable beat in the background. And if we turn it down. So these are now the oscillators with a completely dry signal. Now we can start to add in effects. So if we go to FX1, say we want a reverb, turn it on. And while we're in the FX menu, we can dial in exactly how much effect we want on each track. With a hat, it sounds very hissy having this much reverb. So we hold that down and then we turn the reverb completely off for the hat. 
can do the same with the uh, uh, snare. And then we can turn up more for the oscillators, for the pitched oscillators. You'll see it's different effects. FX2 is a little different because you can't dial in exactly how much you want the effect on each track but you can assign it to certain tracks so let's say we're on filter and we only want to filter on for example the square wave first turn it on and then we assign the effect to only be on channel 3 but you can only assign it to one channel at a time. Now what if you want to play melodies or change the pitch in real time? Well, you have a couple of options for that. The most obvious one is to, while the pattern is playing, to select the little piano screen and adjust it while it's playing. So like this, if we take, if we make this sine wave, our primary pitch, go through until we find the pitch screen, and then we can navigate our way across the keyboard. I can choose another oscillator. As you can tell, it's pretty hard to dial it in accurately. So it's more in a way to find patterns you like on the go, rather than to play it as an actual keyboard. So this way you can adjust one pitch at a time. But you can also reassign these knobs so that the top row, the blackish blue knobs, control the pitch. So by doing that, we go to Pots, and here we can select different options, and all the way to the right, we have the Synth mode. So here you can see that the top encoder goes for frequency, the mid goes for wave, and the white one goes for the length. So now if we start the sequencers again, the pitch will be completely different, because now they're based off of these knobs. So you can hear it sounds very chaotic at the moment. So if we start with this one, maybe we want the drums to be there this time. So now we can assign a different sound using the little red encoder here. Same with this one, we want the clap this time. Give it a more steady beat. And you can also adjust how high pitch or low pitch do you want it. So in the next one we want the hats again. So then we This one as a pitch oscillator, so let's dial it into C. Maybe we want a different oscillator, so we'll use the triangle. We'll change the C 
sequencer to random. want this one to be shorter, just a little pluck. Let's use the white encoder, we can do that on all of them. And now we can adjust the pitches in real time. Now we have this A flat major chord running. Now we can just start playing around with it. Then you can experiment like that for however long you want. The workflow actually reminds me a little bit about the workflow in the Moog Subharmonicon because dialing in different knobs seems a little bit random but you can get really interesting and weird results and sometimes you just hit a nerve and you find something that sticks. The synth engines in the TX6 are a ton of fun and you can definitely get lost in tweaking and programming all the different sounds. However, there are a lot of limitations that at the moment makes it not very useful as a synth. So I really hope Teenage Engineering will improve the synth interface with their firmware updates in the future. And here are some of the things I would like to see. The ability to program pitch changes in the sequencers so that they are not purely rhythmical. The ability to chain more effects together so that you could, for example, use delay and reverb together. I would like to see ADSR envelopes so that you could adjust the attack, decay, sustain and release and have more control of the sounds. And last but not least, I would like to see vastly improved MIDI compatibility. And I'll talk more about MIDI in the TX6 in the next video. So I hope you found this video useful and I will see you in the next video. And in the meantime, you can check out this video right here where I cover the hardware and the basic functions of the TX6.